OK, so explain why there must be a value z on the interval negative 3, 5, such that f of z equals 6. So again, using the IVT, we've got to make sure that we have a continuous and diff First of all, guys, we have a double derivative uh, differentiable function. That means it is differentiable, correct, on this interval, and it's also continuous. So we know at least the premise here for the IVT, we're going to be good. right? The main important thing, though, is we want to find, does this output value 6, does that fall between our you know, two values? Because we want to find the value c that you know, exists. So what we're going to do is we're going to need to check our two endpoints. So let's go and take a look at f of negative 3. At f of negative 3, we're equal to 1. And at f of 5, f of 5, we're equal to 7. So if this function, whatever this function looks like, negative 3, we're at 1. And at 5, 2, 3, 4, 5, we're at 7. Is there some value where the graph has to cross to 6? Has to. Right? It has to. What? There's a question. Uh, negative 3 is 0, right? Sorry. So it's down here. So at negative 3, we're going to here. And then we're ending at f of 5, which is 7. At some place, we're crossing 6. We don't know when we're crossing 6. It could go like this, right? Cross 6 there. It could cross 6 here. It could cross there. We have no idea. But we know it has to cross 6 because the function is continuous and the function is differentiable, right? It's continuous on the closed interval and differentiable on the open interval. Yes? Using the graph, how would you be able to decide if differentiable Well, it, t it tells us. You wouldn't know. You wouldn't know based on the table. You'd have to be told that it's a differentiable function. Okay. So now let's go and write our justification. Again, this is an existence theorem, so we know we're going to be using the IVT. <sighs> OK, so we could say since 0 is less than 6, which is less than 7, and f is continuous, on the closed interval, negative 3 and 5, So 